very much. Thank you, you for the three, opportunity. You give us three minutes. Um, so actually, I made it finally. Um, so I'm one of the neurologists and postdoctoral fellows from Melbourne, and um, this research it was essentially generated from a long time ago in, in the lab, but also the clinical applications of it came about from my neurology training. And I remember one of the saddest clinics that I attended was the neuro-oncology or the, the brain tumor clinic. And uh, going there as a neuro neurology trainee, it was quite sad to see these patients. The majority of the patients were quite young. They had the rest of their life ahead of them, and most of the time it was very unexpected, the diagnosis of brain tumor, with implications for their life, for their livelihood, for their work, for their family. And, and the entire uh, the entire future for the individual, and and I remember um, and then uh, in terms of the actual consequences of that, it was quite drastic. And as clinicians, nothing has really changed. And even to this day, we continue to diagnose these diseases. We continue to prescribe the current standard treatment, but essentially we are limited. And uh, and if you speak with any oncologist or any uh, radiation oncologist or brain surgeon, they will tell you that. We, we do what we can, but most of the time we feel hopeless and uh, we feel at loss as to what we can do for these patients. So then, then this brings us to the laboratory component of this research. Um, so while in the clinic it can be quite hopeless and, and uh, quite dramatic, in the, in the lab what, you, what we have been seeing is that if you take samples from these uh, individuals that are having their tumor resected and you take it to the lab and you study it under the microscope and you actually culture it and, and look at these tumors mm -hmm. over time, what you will see is that there's a pattern, that there's a hierarchy, there's order, so that this ugly disease it's got some elements that, is, that you can understand, that you can unravel. So from a scientist's perspective, um, you kind of get to have this innocence of hope that maybe we can understand these processes, maybe we can actually work through this, and it will be hard, it will be difficult, but maybe there is hope in that. So our project is a, is a link of the, of the human or the patient side, and then it brings about the clinical or the laboratory aspect to it. So what we do is we look at tumors as the patient is having surgery where they're, with their consent. We take their tumor to the lab and examine that. And obviously, hopefully, the patient goes home, but the tumor stays with us. So we look at the molecular pro profile of that tumor. We look at the genetic makeup of the tumor. We look at the cells that make up that tumor. And what we have found is that the immune cells, the microglia, these immune defense cells in the tumor, they are very cr critical for tumor proliferation or growth of that tumor. And we have also found that there's a specific receptor, which is called a P2X7 receptor. It's basically a protein that sits in the membrane of these immune cells. And we have found that this receptor is critical in the pr uh, propagation of these tumors, at least in the culture or in the petri dish. And if, if you inhibit this receptor by various agents, by various pharmacological agents, you can inhibit many processes, many steps in tumor proliferation. And, and that is quite, it, it gives us hope. And, and that was the, uh, the research proposal that we have to the Brain Foundation. And we are very grateful as, as, a, as a team of clinicians, as a team of scientists, that, that uh, the work is being recognized and we feel uh, humbled and uh, we acknowledge the contribution of the scientific committee. The patients also is, is, is a very important component of, of, the, of the research. Their family members because they actually contribute quite a lot in, in a very uh, in a state of um, of being uh, it's not it's not a, a it's not the greatest moment of their life and in that setting they do contribute quite significantly. So uh, we are grateful for that and we are also grateful for the opportunity and I think uh, as as helpless that the disease can be, I think as scientists, as clinicians, we need to come together, the collaboration and with work, uh, it might be long hours, endless work, eventually, hopefully, there might be a change in the, in the dynamics of uh, human brain tumors or gliomas, and hopefully with the aim of trying to develop therapies that are more effective than what we have available. So thank you to the, for the opportunity, thank you to the donors, the Brain Foundation, and uh, thank you for coming tonight. Thank you.